Hey there boys and girls, my name is Kyle, better on the YouTube as Blinkcraft, and today I'm coming to you with a Unity programming tutorial. Uh, this one is because I really couldn't find any decent tutorials on how to make low poly water instead of Unity. And uh, this one, my solution, it, it works pretty well. You still have some extra work to do and we'll get into that in the end, but uh, it works for what I needed to work for. And so seeing how it took me about five hours of clicking through random tutorials and most of the time, most of these cunts on YouTube, they're just posting like, oh, this is my progress or this is something cool I made. And it's like, cool, do you got any source code? And they're just like, nah, or people ask for the source code and they just ignore them. And then it's like, oh, okay. Or, or it's people showing off assets that they're selling in the store. And it's like, yeah, that's nice. But I don't, what you could pay for is pretty good. But I don't want to pay $10 for just for a water feature, especially in a game I'm not planning on selling. I'm just building this for fun. Uh, sometimes some things aren't just worth the money. And so I don't think getting nice water, especially for a game where I'm only going to be using the water for like little, little lakes and ponds and stuff, it's, it's not only really worth the money. So this is my homemade solution. Um, and hopefully someone finds this useful. I'm saving you I'm saving you about five or six hours worth of work, so you're welcome. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is inside of Unity, we wanna make two scripts. One's gonna be called the water plane generator, and the other one's gonna be called make some noise. You can call your scripts whatever you want. Those are just the names I came up with. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. Water plane generator is just going to generate a plane that we can use to manipulate the vertices and make some noise is just my clever name for the script that actually moves the water and manipulates the vertices. So in our water plane generator, we wanna create a public float Call it size, and then I'm just going to set the base value of one. Uh, if you're not super, super into Unity and you don't understand all the the ins and outs of how it works, basically when you set stuff to public, it's going to be viewable in the inspector, and it's really nice because it means you can on the fly change your values to whatever you want without having to go back into your scripts. Also, in public, it means you can technically call it from other scripts or stuff like that. But for the most part, we want to make stuff public because, at least in this example, you want to make it public because we want to be able to modify these on the fly from the inspector without having to reopen up the, the script tab or switch over and uh, launch the software for writing this code i'm just gonna be using visual studio um, but you can write it whenever you feel like after our size we want to create a public int and this is gonna be called grid size and i'm just gonna set the base size to 16. now in case you don't know what floats and ints are floats are floating point numbers which means we could have like 1.01 or 1.25 basically can have a decimal uh, whereas an integer is going to be like a whole number so you have one two three four five you know on on and on and on and there are caps for ints and stuff like that i think it's like 256,000 or I, someone else could know it's some weird number based on like what computers can handle so but for the most part floats and ints we can use them pretty safe and we don't have to worry about it and i'm going to set that size one and grid size 16. now that the public stuff's out of the way we need to create a private mesh filter object and i'm just going to call it filter and we don't have to set to anything right now because we're going to do that in the start method now the reason why it's private is because we want it just to be used inside the script and we don't want any other scripts or anything else to be able to access this and, and, and manipulate it in any way in our start method we're going to set filter equal to to get component mesh filter and basically this is just looking inside our object and saying hey yo do you have a mesh filter component and when it finds it, it's just going to grab it and store it in that filter then we're going to modify the filter and say filter.mesh and so this is grabbing our actual mesh from our filter and we're going to say generate mesh now it's not going to know what that is because we have to make that method we'll get back to that though before we actually write our generate mesh method we actually need to talk about returning stuff so usually your method such as the start for example will say void and mine says private void start because i like to make it private just so it can't be called from anything else and the reason why it says void is because it's returning nothing it's void however for our generate mesh we want to actually return a mesh out of it so i'm going to say private mesh generate mesh and so this means it's going to need a return and while we're writing it until we write that return line uh it's going to say there's like an error it's going to give you that squiggly red line and you can just ignore it we'll return something eventually if it bothers you that much you can just say return null and then you know it'll be good to go within our generate mesh we want to set mesh and equals new mesh so we're, we're creating a new mesh obviously and then we're going to create three variables we want var vertices and that's going to be a new list and it's going to be a list of vector threes we want var normals it's also going to be a new list and it's going to be a list of vector threes as well and we want var uvs it's going to be a new list and it's going to be a list of vector twos this time now this makes sense because vertices it needs three points that's what a vector three is and so we're storing three points within it the reason why you want that is because a vertice has a global world space position of x y and z so you need to store all three values same thing with normals however uvs that is a flat plane and it, it only has two so we only really need the x and the z now it could be x and y it, it doesn't really matter it's not locked in but because i'm thinking of a flat plane and in unity y is the height value so i'm thinking x and z next up we need to make a for loop so how for loops work is basically you're going to set int x equals zero and it doesn't have to be x you can call that variable whatever you want i just like x because we're going to be looping through all the x and then all the y's and that's how we're going to generate each individual plane so int x equals zero while x is less than grid size plus one we want x plus plus and that's going to loop through until 
that statement is no longer true. So until X is no longer less than the grid size plus one. Inside that for loop, we wanna create another for loop and this is gonna be Y equals zero. It's also gonna be an integer. While Y is less than grid size plus one, Y plus plus. So now we're looping through all our X's and all our Y's and we're gonna start generating stuff. So we wanna to add to our vertices list by doing vertices.add. We're gonna create a new vector three and this is gonna take three points. So we want negative size times 0.5F which means float. It's gonna get angry if you don't put the F, so make sure you have the F there. And then we're gonna add size, and we're gonna multiply that by X divided by grid size. You need to make sure you cast grid size as a float. Our next point is gonna be zero because we don't want any height to our Y value, so we just leave that as zero. And then for our Z value, we want negative size times 0.5F plus size times y divided by grid size and again make sure grid size is cast as a float next up we're going to add our normals so we want normals.add and then we're just going to tell it vector 3 up so it's always pointing up vector 3 has a lot of cool stuff like this such as forward down uh up maybe right or left i'm not exactly sure i don't use them that much most of the time i just stick to vector 3 forward and vector 3 up and that's just kind of telling you okay it needs to be pointing this direction in world space for our uvs we just want uvs.add and we want a new vector 2 and remember vector 3 has three points so obviously vector 2 has two points so we're just doing x divided by grid size and y divided by grid size and again make sure grid size is cast as a float that's pretty much it for actually generating all the vertices and the normals but now we have to go through and generate our triangles so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new var called triangles and it's going to be a new list of integers then we want var vert count equals grid size plus one and we'll be using vert count to actually loop through stuff now before we get into this let me just quick talk about how things are generated so basically what we're doing is to create a plane you have four vertices you have four points and we want to generate point zero one two and three remember everything arrays like that start at zero so it's zero one two three so we want to generate point zero and then we want to go over a certain amount generate point one, go over a certain amount and up a certain amount, and that's point two. And we wanna go over nothing, but just up a certain amount, and that's point three. Once we have those, we need to generate triangles. So our triangles are gonna be zero, one, and three for our first triangle, and our second triangle will be one, two, and three. So we're taking four points, making a plane, and we're gonna split that into two separate triangles. So now for actually creating the triangles, we're gonna do another for loop, int i equals zero, while i is less than vert count, times vert count minus vert count, we want i plus plus, and then we wanna write if, i plus one percent sign vert count is equal to zero we want to continue then we want triangles dot add range and we want to add a new list of integers and within that we want i plus one plus vert count and that's our first point then we want i plus vert count and then we just want i then down on a new line for our second triangle we want i then i plus one then i plus vert count plus one now that we're done with all the crazy math we can actually get into setting all this stuff so we want to grab our mesh with m and then do dot set vertices pass in our vertices list m dot set normals pass in the normals list m dot set uvs pass in zero and then our uvs list and then m dot set triangles pass in our triangles and then pass in a zero value now when all that's done we can return m or whatever you called your mesh now i'm not going to get into the super nitty gritties of all the math here this will work if you want to figure out more i'll have a link down in the description below where there's like a 50 minute tutorial where the guy breaks down all the math for you and he tries to figure this out um, i'm just showing you how to do it and i'm just going to keep things moving because that's my style next up in our make some noise file we're going to need a couple public floats we need power i'm going to set that equal to three scale set that equal to one time scale set that equal to one and then we need two private floats and a private mesh filter again my first private flow is just gonna be called x offset i'm not gonna set it to anything because we'll do that later and then we need another private float called y offset and again i'm not gonna set that anything then we need a private mesh filter i'm just gonna call it mf now in our start method again we want to set mf equal to get component and we're going to grab that mesh filter off our object and then we're going to call make noise we'll cover making this method in a second but in this one we actually will be using our update method so inside the update method we're going to call make noise again and then below that we want to set x offset plus equals time dot delta time and if you've ever wondering that's how you get time within unity is time dot delta time and then we're going to multiply that by time scale and then the y offset is also going to be time dot delta time times time scale now that the update method's done and that's going to get called once per frame we want to create our actual noise method for this one we can do void make noise and it's void because remember we're not sending anything back so we have to set it to void we're going to create a new array of vector threes so you just do vector three and then the square brackets we're going to call it vertices and that's going to equal mf which is our mesh filter dot mesh so we're grabbing our mesh from our mesh filter and we're going to get its vertices with dot vertices now what we're going to do is run another for loop where i equals zero and while i is less than vertices dot length i plus plus and while we're looping through there we're going to grab out each individual vertice with vertices 
And then in the square brackets, we're going to pass in the I value. So we're getting the current loop that we're on, which is going to get the current vertice that we want. And we're going to set its dot Y, which means we're adjusting its Y world space position. Now, what are we setting it to? Well, we're going to create a new function called calculate height. But before we do that, we'll just call it here. So we want calculate height. And then we're going to pass in vertices I, which is our current vertice, dot X, and then vertices I dot Z. We're going to multiply all that by power. Now below the for loop, we'll quickly just set MF dot mesh dot vertices equal to our vertices. So we're just kind of updating what the meshes vertices need to be. All right, now that that's done, down below the make noise method, we need to create our actual calculate height method. To do that, we're gonna set float calculate height, and we want to bring in two variables, float x and float y. Now remember, we're setting it to float because it's gonna return a float. If it was gonna return anything, we would set it void. Now within this method, we wanna create two more floats. One's gonna be called x chord, and one's gonna be called y chord. And for each of these, we're just gonna set it to x times scale plus offset x. And then y will obviously not use x, it'll be y times scale plus offset y. Once we have our x and y coordinates set up, we're just going to return math.f, and we wanna call the Perlin noise function, and we're gonna pass in our x chords and our y chords. Now that that's all done and all the code's been gone through, we need to go back into Unity. We're gonna right click and create an empty game object within our hierarchy. I'm just gonna set mine to zero, zero, zero. So it's nice and centered right in the middle of the world. And then I'm going to attach two components. We need a mesh filter and we need a mesh renderer. Once we have both of those, I'm just going to drop in the water plane generator script and the make some noise script. Now, if you click play at this moment, you will see a single square pop up and it'll start to wiggle and that's fine, but we need to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to adjust these values to whatever my desired amount is to get the right size water and the, the right amount of bumps and texture that I'm looking for. Once you're all set with that, you're pretty much good to go. You generated a mesh plane and you are manipulating the vertices to give it that low poly water wiggle. Some next steps that you could do would be to add ambient occlusion to the camera and then adjusting the values so it looks good. So you have some nice darkening and some shadows in the dips. You can create a water material and you could build a custom shader to get the desired shininess and specular effects, but that's way above my pay grade, and I'm not going to be able to help you with that. Or maybe later. We'll see. That's about it for this time. If you have any questions or tutorials, suggestions, leave it down in the comments below. As always, my name is Kyle. You just learned something cool today. I'll see you next time.